So today I'm going to paint a self-portrait using my reflection, but my reflection is going to be into this silver ball. So hey everybody, I'm Ken Brandt and I'm an artist. So when you do a self-portrait, there's so many different ways to do it. You can do it from a photograph, you can do it from a mirror. Today we're going to do it, it's going to be sort of like a mirror, but it's going to have major distortion to it, almost like a fisheye lens. And that's going to be through the use of this silver ball. Now there is a painting, or a drawing if you will, uh, Moritz Esker, who's uh, famous for drawing the never-ending staircase, and he's drawn uh, various... Uh, patterns on on paper. Um, he did a self-portrait using a silver ball or at least I believe it's a silver ball and so this painting is going to be kind of like a homage to uh, Esker in a way but the main difference obviously is going to be that instead of his face being in the silver ball it's going to be mine. So without any further ado let's get into the painting and so I'm going to show you the colors that I'm going to use for this painting. It's not a limited palette, but there are specific colors that I want to try to work with um, because you are going to see my hand in the painting, so there will be some flesh colors. So I'll show what colors I'm going to mix for the flesh colors and also how to get this silvery reflection um, from this ball itself. Okay, let's begin. So the first color I'm going to start with is my titanium white. I like to use the titanium white as opposed to any other white. It's a smoother, thicker white and it's much more archival than say for example zinc white. Um, lead white is also a good white to use but I like to use the titanium. The next color I'm going to use uh, is going to be the Windsor Lemon. It's a very nice yellow and this will um, be a nice uh, yellow to mix in for the skin colors um, for those yellowish uh, hues within the flesh tones. Next I'll be using the cadmium yellow uh, light which is again a very nice yellow to use and um, I like the uh, cadmiums as opposed to any of the hues. Next I'll use Cadmium Red Light. Um, this is a uh, color that I will be utilizing um, within uh, mixing in a little bit within the flesh tones um, just for the warmer areas like because you're going to see my hand so for the warmer areas such as uh, near the fingertips. Then I'm going to use the Thalo Red Rose and I'm using this in lieu of a linzer and crimson and the only reason um, I'm just experimenting at this point I, I love using a and crimson it's always been on my palette so I want to see if thalo red rose uh, actually works better than the linzer crimson or if I, you know if I just like it better that's how you find out if you know what works for you and what doesn't that by you know, throwing in a color in there that you don't normally use and see if it works for you. Next I'm going to use, a, put on the palette, a cobalt blue and cobalt blue is the a warmer blue as opposed to like say for example cerulean blue is a cool blue. Uh, cobalt blue is a warmer blue and I will use that for any of the bluish uh, hues within the flesh tones. Next on my palette I will be using a permanent yellow green and this is another nice color to uh, mix in for the flesh tones. Um, I, it can also go by the name of phthalo yellow green or permanent green. It's just a great green to use. Also to mix in with the flesh tones because um, you have various uh, blues and reds and greens uh, within the flesh tones and it's amazing the different colors that are in skin and I like to try to put them in where I see them and um, another green that I like to use in that case is the chrome oxide green so we'll put that on the palette. Then for the ground colors uh, raw umber is a nice color that I like to use within the shadow areas of flesh tones so we'll be using that. Another color 
ground color that I like to use also within the shadow areas it really makes a, it's a really nice brown and I also like to use it to mix in with my other colors kind of dull them down a little bit is uh, Asphaltum and I prefer the Asphaltum by Richeson's oils and you can order this online um, this Asphaltum has uh, more of a yellow uh, tint to it whereas if you get a uh, Asphaltum from any other um, brand they tend to mix it with uh, red Mars or I'm sorry they tend to mix it with Mars red so it's just a preference I kinda like the yellowish hue within my uh, ground color as opposed to the red and then last on my palette I like to put in my ivory black and this is the black that I prefer opposed to the other blacks because there's uh, bone black there's Mars black there's, uh, yeah, they're just different kinds of blacks to use. And so ash, ash black. Um, I prefer the ivory black. Uh, I like the way it mixes. I like the way it dulls down. And it does have a bluish hue to it. And that's one of the reasons why I like to use it. So these are the colors I like to put on my palette. And I usually start with the white the yellows, the reds, the blues, the greens, my ground colors, and then my black. And that's the order I like to put them in, and then I have this nice area here to uh, do all my mixing. So my biggest decision right off the bat was, do I want to start painting what I'm seeing inside the ball, or do I want to start painting what I'm seeing outside the ball? So the decision I made was to actually paint what I was seeing outside the ball first. So I started with my hand and my, uh, you know, my my arm, and uh, the color I'm using here for the shadow area is uh, asphaltum, right out of the tube, basically. And this is a great color to use for shadow areas for these uh, skin tone. I highly recommend that if you don't know which color to utilize for the darker uh, shaded areas, if you're doing flesh tones, I would just start right with the asphalt. And then from there, you can mix in various other colors such as uh, the lemon yellow or the phthalo uh, red rose into the, that color and uh, if it's too dark um, but I would just say a lot of times you'd be surprised at exactly just how dark the shadow areas of the skin really are um, they end up being, being pretty dark so you just go right in there with, with that asphalt them and that works great and for the various other uh, shades that I end up using for the uh, flesh tone on my arm and my hand, um, I use the uh, yellow red rose for the warmer areas. And I did put in some lemon yellow for the uh, where I felt my skin had a yellowish uh, tone to it. And right along the edge, um, the right hand edge of my hand. Um, there were some areas that I saw in there that actually had a greenish tint to it, and that's where I ended up using the uh, chrome oxide green in those areas. And it, it wasn't a lot, it was just a little bit mixed in with the flesh tones that I already had mixed together using the yellow red rose and the lemon yellow, M mixed along with the asphalt. And that really seemed to work out well. I was very pleased with how it looked and um, the fact that I did this all a la prima and in one uh, I painted this all all in one standing um, so I was able to utilize those exact same colors in the reflected area inside the silver ball itself so and I felt that was I needed to do that um, even if I wasn't going to do this a la prima if I was going to stop at some point and maybe continue this the next day but I still had to make sure that I did do 
the my hand and my arm outside of the ball um, and my hand and my arm reflected inside the ball at the same time just to kind of keep a uh, uh, consistency between the colors uh, between the outside and the inside. So then I, uh, you can see here where I, I actually started applying those colors uh, to the inside uh, reflection. And this was, um, again, another decision I made. I, I wasn't sure, like, should I just work, you know, just so I do everything on the outside of the ball first and then start hitting the inside. Or, so I figured, well, I did them. I did my arm and my hand. I might as well do my arm and my hand inside the ball now and get those done. And that's kind of how I worked. I went kind of back and forth. Um, between uh, you know working on the inside what I saw on my reflection and what was on the outside and you'll see that you'll see that I went uh, back and forth back and forth and eventually I just uh, um, decided that uh, yeah, that's how I would just attack this. Uh, so when I started doing the background, I'd put that color in, and then I would go to the reflection of that background inside the ball. And that seemed to work out best. Pretty much utilized every color that you saw at the beginning of this video that I put on my palette. I would have to say out of all those colors, the cadmium yellow, the lemon yellow, and the ivory black were probably the three most used as far and the asphalt. So for the four most used colors. Uh, second would be probably the phthalo red rose, because I did have some warmer areas with it. So, yeah, all those colors were utilized, and I would say the least utilized color would probably have been the um, the uh, chrome oxide green and the cobalt blue. Those two colors were very minimally used within this painting, but they were used. So here you can see I did the background uh, color, and then I went right in that uh, variation of that color and I started doing what uh, how it looked in the reflection of the ball now the important thing about this ball was to make sure that I was able to get that effect of a metallic silver ball and how I did that was I noticed while I was holding it um, there was like this effect on the silver itself where the colors would kind of all conglomerate along the edges making a very dark edge on the ball and so I made sure I copied that into the painting because I felt that was important to get that metallic ball effect. So on the left hand side and the right hand side of the ball you'll notice that I have a darker edge going along the circumference of the ball and I kind of blend that in a little bit and it really makes it look very metallic. Now where the background is, is darker I made sure that that edge had a lighter color along it um, and so that's kind of like uh, stitched the ball into the painting so it didn't look like it was a, a paper cutout sitting on top of the painting so it's like a checkering effect between the dark and the light and how it plays against each other within the, uh, the painting itself and I think this is important to do with all your paintings um, to uh, make sure that you 
you know, whatever you're painting on, whatever your subject matter is, it, it, it belongs in the painting. It doesn't look like it's sitting on top of your painting. So here's where I started. Uh, I put in the background color and I said, okay, now I'm going to start working on my own personal reflection. And I firmly believe that the the likeness of my reflection in the ball is not actually the true likeness of me. But at the same time, it does have a familiarity to it. I wouldn't say it looks exactly like me, but I wouldn't say it doesn't either. And uh, so, um, and the size brushes I was using for this painting, I pretty much stuck between a medium to a large for like around the outside edges. And then for the uh, inside reflection uh, areas of the ball, it's kind of a medium-sized brush. Um, and I went back and forth between a uh, flat and a round. And uh, every now and then, I have a smaller cat tongue that I, I like to uh, use every now and then, so I utilize that brush as well. So nothing majorly big, and I didn't go extremely small either. Um, for the uh, detailed areas within the reflection like of my face um, yeah the brush that I used wasn't um, extremely small and you can see here that uh, it, it was large enough to get some detail in there but it was actually too large to get uh, you know like you can't see my eyeballs or anything in this painting so yeah it was too large for that so pretty much I was just able to, able to get the shaded areas of my eye sockets in and around my nose. And then the thing that makes that pop out is I was able to concentrate on like the tip of my nose, my forehead, and my cheeks. And that kind of gives that effect of a face. And that seemed to work out pretty good. So all in all, this painting... Uh, um, I did all this uh, a la prima and I was extremely happy with how it came out and uh, yeah the, the effects of the shadow and the light within the uh, silver ball um, I was extremely happy with how that looked and I thought it was a very cool a very cool concept and I think that that's uh, it made it uh, uh, fun to paint because of that My tattoo that I have on my arm, I just pretty much uh, just put in, a, you know, like some darker and lighter areas of black, and uh, you know, didn't not too much detail there, but just enough to give it the effect of a tattoo, and uh, made sure that it uh, it did kind of blend in with the skin a little bit, so it didn't look like it was just like some sort of blob sitting on top of the skin. The areas in the background, all of those have very soft edges. Everything is blurred, um, so that way, you know, it just uh, the only edges that are sharp are along the edges of the ball itself, and all the reflections, but reflected areas within. And because I wanted to make sure that the viewer's eyes were brought directly to that ball and the reflection, and nothing around it. So I made sure to use soft edges for the, everything else. So I hope you enjoyed this process. If you have any questions, please leave it, uh, them in the comments below. And if there's anything else that you want to see, let me know. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And uh, make sure you hit that like notification. And I'll see you next time.
For coaching and information on how to move your painting to the next level, make sure you give me a call at area code 607-481-9442. That's area code 607-481-9442. And make sure you visit my website at kennethbrandt.com. And while you're there, sign up for my email newsletter and be uh, placed into a drawing for a free painting. So again, remember, visit KennethBrandt.com and call area code 607-481-9442.